today. Uh, before I get into the COVID update and where we're at, I want to uh, express um, sorrow for the devastation that the floods are causing through uh, the Poudre Canyon. Uh, we've lost one life. Uh, two more Coloradans are currently missing. Uh, we know of at least five structures that have been lost. Uh, largely, it's the heavy debris moving through the river. And of course, uh, my thoughts are with uh, families who are grieving and those who uh, lost homes or don't yet know if they've lost homes or loved ones. Uh, this is really the aftermath of the uh, three largest fires in the history of the Colorado last year. We're not just seen in Poudre Canyon, also Glenwood Canyon is currently closed due to massive mudslides. Uh, Colorado Department of Transportation, Colorado Department of Public Safety are assisting local authorities to uh, get things open as quickly as possible. If you are planning a trip, I suggest you visit cotrip.org. Uh, to check for road closures, especially in the Glenwood Canyon area. Uh, here with us today is Tara Trujillo. She is Colorado's COVID-19 vaccine campaign manager, who's going to discuss the ongoing campaign to get more Coloradans vaccinated. We know how to end the pandemic. It's in our power to do so, uh, and we need to do so. Uh, and we are leaving no stunned or unturned in doing that. It's really a full court press. Uh, it's not any one thing. It's all of the above. Uh, it's everything from phone banking, to working with community partners, to texting, to incentives, uh, to convenience and availability, to uh, get beyond uh, this public health crisis. We're also joined by Joe Garcia, Chancellor of the Colorado Community College System, to show how community college students and the tens of thousands of Coloradans that they touch are stepping up, uh, along with a partnership with Amazon, and Brittany Morris Saunders from uh, Amazon is here to do it, uh, and to, they're gonna announce an exciting new partnership to uh, encourage uh, tens of thousands of community college students to get vaccinated ahead of fall semester. Brief update on where we're at, uh, 627 new positive cases yesterday. Um, as we have been, you know, for, for some time, um, we really don't focus as much on positive cases as we did. And, and, and this is something many months ago we started because we talked about it's very different if a positive case of somebody who's 25, somebody who's 65. But now even more so, it's very different if a positive case of somebody who's vaccinated who's not vaccinated. Um, in fact, uh, from January through June 30th, and we'll have more um, we're only a few weeks past that, but that's basically the six month period. 95.7% of hospitalizations in Colorado were people that were not vaccinated. So I'll say that again, from January through the end of June, 95.7% of hospitalizations were people that were not fully vaccinated. Uh, and this is at a time when now we're close to 70% vaccinated uh, and yet the vast majority of hospitalizations and of deaths, about 95% of deaths, were also people who weren't vaccinated during that time frame. Vast majority hospitalizations and deaths are those who are unvaccinated. Now, it's uh, when you look at the cases, it's it's you're going to see more cases among the unvaccinated. What you're finding is that uh, those cases are not as significant. Um, the um, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson Johnson, they're, they're proving out as to, to function as advertised. They're somewhere in the 90 to 95% uh, effective rate at preventing a case or infection, uh, but even more effective at preventing hospitalizations and deaths in really in that upper range, closer to 95, 96%. Uh, so we have the tool to uh, end the pandemic, to save lives. I encourage everybody to do it. We currently have 298 hospitalizations. It's been relatively steady the last few weeks, bumped up a little bit came down a little bit, but um, we're at about 298 hospitalizations. So the family members of those who are currently hospitalized from COVID in Colorado, uh, we know that uh, we are cheering for each and every patient, including the 50 that were successfully discharged in the last 24 hours. Uh, the percentage positivity rate, uh, seven day average is 3.7%, is 3.8% today. It was high the last two days, I think it was above 5%, largely due to reductions in the number of people being tested, not, not necessarily just more cases. So I, I encourage everybody, uh, vaccinated or not, if you're ill and have COVID-like symptoms, please get yourself tested because even if you're vaccinated and it's a minor case for you, 
letting everybody around you know might be important, especially if there are people that are unvaccinated that you came into contact with so that if they get ill, they can take the necessary actions early. And remember, there are treatments available for COVID with very strong therapeutic results now. This is very different than the case a year and a half ago where we said, you 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 know, there's nothing you can do. Uh, steroid treatments, um, plasma, many other treatments that have a uh, really significant increase in your odds of, of making it home successfully and healthy. We are at 71.13% of adults in Colorado have gotten at least one dose on their way to being fully protected, uh, ending the pandemic. The Delta variant is now a majority of new cases in Colorado. That means that unvaccinated Coloradans are still at very high risk. And of course, I encourage every unvaccinated Coloradan first and foremost to get vaccinated. But until that vaccination protection takes hold, uh, wear a mask when you're around others and protect yourself with uh, avoiding interactions with others, especially in crowded indoor areas. Um, you know, I know that there's some Coloradans that have taken a wait and see approach when it comes to getting the vaccine. People want to learn more about its impacts and effectiveness. Well, now we can report that it's been eight months since the first Coloradans got their vaccine and the COVID-19 vaccine is safe, effective. Millions of Americans have made the choice to get protected, over 3 million Coloradans, more doing it every day. And uh, those folks are able to live their lives again. And if you are uh, considering uh, getting vaccinated and haven't made that decision, again, the statistic right now, January through the end of June, 95%, over 95% of our hospitalizations are among the unvaccinated in our state, entirely preventable, entirely preventable. Uh, and uh, all you need to do is, is roll up your arm and get a vaccine. Couldn't be easier. Your local pharmacy, your community health clinic, your hospital, your doctor, we're gonna talk about some new ways you can get it, uh, get vaccinated as well today. Uh, our multi-pronged pan campaign really tries to meet people where they are to get vaccinated. We're bringing vaccines to workplaces, partnering with businesses, phone calls, texts, mail, billboards, maybe you saw radio or TV ads. Uh, to talk uh, more about this really sophisticated granular approach that we're taking to increase vaccination rates, I would like to introduce uh, Tara Trujillo, uh, Colorado's COVID-19 vaccine campaign manager, and I'll turn it over to Tara. Tara. And thank you, Governor, for elevating our campaign. Your support has been the reason why we are as successful as we are. I am delighted to be here and to give you another update about the vaccine campaign. To start, our team is still flying high because we made our goal of 70% by July 4th. Colorado is one of the few Western states that made the 70% goal and we're still far ahead most of our neighbors. But we're not taking anything for granted. We are dedicated to vaccinating more Coloradans and every vaccine counts. And we know that the best tool in our toolkit is the vaccine. Our team's working to reach people where they are. And we're offering as much convenience, access, and information as possible. Our goal is to remove any remaining barriers to the vaccination. We vaccinated almost 69% of the population. That would be slide two. Um, ages 12 and up. The average pace of daily vaccinations right now is three to 4,000 people a day. For slide three, our team is working around the clock to ensure Coloradans' questions are addressed and answered. We've made more than 2.3 million outbound calls and we've had meaningful conversations with more than 39,000 Coloradans. Since the start of the campaign in June, we've sent more than 918,000 text messages, both in English and Spanish when appropriate. For our next round of text messages, we'll send 30,000 texts in Spanish. In addition, we have an interactive chat bot on our website and two-way texting in multiple languages that can answer all of Colorado's questions. You can now put your zip code in that box. It'll give you a list of all the vaccination sites closest to you. We know not that not everyone's online and we understand that not everyone has a smartphone. We don't want anyone to be left behind. Our goal is to ensure that everyone has the information they need to get vaccinated. During our push to get 70% of adults vaccinated in Colorado, we sent three direct mail pieces to 1.4 million households each time. The federal government has provided each state resources to do outreach and marketing to increase vaccination rates. And we've been maximizing those dollars to the best of our ability. 
for slide four, we launched our Power the Comeback campaign in April. The statewide vaccine campaign is helping to build vaccine confidence and make it easier for Coloradans to find vaccine sites closest to them. It seeks to meet Coloradans where they are and we're using layered tactics to do so. This includes television ads on 16 different English and Spanish language channels, totaling nearly 67 million impressions between early May and the end of June. For slide six, we have ads in 26 mainstream radio stations, 10 in Spanish outlets, one station, KETO, AM and FM, targets refugees who speak several different languages. For slide seven, we're also running in-game on Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. But we know that not everyone is online, which is why we're also running a robust ad campaign in print. It includes a total of 28 newspapers with a focus on rural and Spanish language outlets. We're also targeting traditional and non-traditional out-of-home advertising like billboards, lunch trucks, and signs in community grocery stores. And for all of our communications and campaign tactics, we're using vaccine administration data to plan and we're using our investments where they're needed the most. We're also working closely with a trusted network of influencers to help spread accurate information about the COVID-19 vaccine. These are people from various sectors and industries who engage their communities. Peer-to-peer -peer communication is an important way for us to reach Coloradans that aren't watching these press conferences. For misinformation, it is imperative that we are providing accurate information to Coloradans so they can make an informed decision for themselves and their families. There's no such thing as a silly question. We want to answer all of them so that you can make the right decision for you and your family. We know that there are a lot of rumors out there and we want to be a source of factual information. We're committed to answering your questions and discussing your concerns. We want to be helpful. We also know that inaccurate information is spreading around the internet. That's why we have a few specific tactics to fight it. We are offering accurate information in the places where misinformation is spread. That includes platforms like YouTube, TikTok, and Reddit. Our paid search efforts target a list of 1,500 words in English and Spanish, and we are updating them regularly to respond to misinformation and disinformation. We're using messengers and messages that resonate with Coloradans. And we've been ahead of the curve on this nationally. Since March, CDPHE has been working with misinformation and disinformation experts that track rumors and misinformation in Colorado, make recommendations on how to respond. At this point in our statewide vaccination efforts, we know we must keep trying to reach people where they are. We're partnering with businesses and organizations on our workplace vaccination program to provide vaccine clinics on work sites. Employers can enroll at atworkvaccinations.com. For mobile clinics, we're bringing the vaccine to Coloradans. We have nine buses that travel to traditionally underrepresented communities to make sure that everyone has access to a vaccine. And we're very proud that we, our buses have provided more than 21,000 doses at 570 stops. And of course, we are still working hard to reach the communities that have been hit the hardest by this pandemic. It's hard work, but it's worth it. And we know we have more work to do. Through the state's equity clinics, more than 450,000 doses of the vaccine have been administered and more than 16,000 clinics hosted with community partners. We are so excited to say that more than 3.4 million Coloradans have been vaccinated with at least one dose. This work continues to be important to Colorado's recovery. Thank you, Governor, for all that you and your staff at the Colorado Department of Health and Environment have been doing for the last years, two years to keep Colorado safe. Uh, you know, and it's it's going to be harder to get to from 70 to 80 percent than it was to get from zero to 70 percent. But we are ready for the hard work, uh, and we are hard at work to get it done. Every Coloradan that gets protected increases your protection from the pandemic as well. Uh, and remember, there's uh, all of our research shows there are 10 to 15 percent uh, of Coloradans that aren't don't plan to get the vaccine. Uh, it's not about changing their minds. There's just a big gap between the 71 percent who have it. Let's call it. 85% uh, where you might top out with people who don't want it. So there's a good 14, 15% there that uh, have been putting it off, uh, might be hesitant, but have not ruled it out and, and said that they're not going to get it. And, and it's just a matter of, of, of uh, working hard to do that outreach. And along those lines, we're announcing a new partnership today, starting tomorrow. 
The state of Colorado is offering $100 Walmart cards while supplies last uh, at sites, uh, particularly in under-vaccinated areas. Folks in the area will get a text update. They can come and get a $100 Walmart gift certificate that'll be activated within 24 hours. And uh, starting tomorrow, we will be at the Caribou Room uh, in Netherland. We'll be at the Walmart in Aurora, 10400 East Colfax. We'll be at Boyd Park in Alamosa. We'll be at Hooper Junction Store across from the post office in Hooper. We'll be at the Walmart Supercenter in Loveland. Uh, we'll be at Canyon City High School in Canyon City. This is all tomorrow. Uh, and then those are all day sites. And then we have some uh, partial day sites, Barkman Library in Pueblo, 1 to 6 p.m. Walmart Supercenter in Delta, uh, Chambers Shopping Center in Denver, 12 to 7 p.m., and St. Cajetan uh, Church Community Center in Denver, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. So these will be sites where, again, there'll be extensive text outreach to people in the area. You can get a $100 Walmart gift certificate, you know, bring your, bring your kids over 12. Uh, we've been highlighting the 70, over 71% of adults, but uh, for 12 to 17 year olds, we are still in the mid 40s percentage wise. So there's a lot more work to do as well. Um, this, will, this will help people get protected first and foremost, that's why we're doing it. But we know it means a lot to you know, a single mom with three kids 12 to 17 to go and get vaccinated with the family and get $400 worth of Walmart gift certificates. That can make a big difference. To find out where these sites are, um, you can go to cocomebackcash.com. Uh, and again, there's targeted outreach around each and every one of them so that people in the area know uh, that they can get this extra incentive uh, to get vaccinated in, in their area. Some of them are actually in Walmart uh, parking lots, as we indicated, uh, and uh, regular shoppers will know that they can get a $100 gift certificate as well for their next visit. No higher education. Uh, we want to talk about our community colleges. They touch tens of thousands of Coloradans. Many of them work part-time or full-time. Many of them are part-time students. Uh, they're very much members of our communities. We want not just our campuses to be safer, but really everywhere uh, our community college students, uh, part-time and full-time of all ages, spend their time. And I'm excited to inter inter introduce a new partnership between our community college system and Amazon. And with that, I will introduce the Chancellor of Colorado's community college system, Joe Garcia. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I'm Joe Garcia. As the Governor said, I'm Chancellor of the community college system here in Colorado. It consists of 13 colleges with about 38 locations throughout our state, and we serve about 125,000 students. I want to thank the governor first for his incredible leadership over these last 18 months. It's been incredibly challenging, yet he's been tenacious, he's been guided by science, he's been innovative, and he's involved all of us to help make Colorado safer while keeping our economy strong. So just as that's been his focus, our focus is to grow our economy by educating Coloradans. Coloradans who are generally members of our communities, who stay in our communities after they graduate. That's our number one mission, is to help our students change their lives by getting an education. But we know they cannot do that if they are not safe. So our priority this year has been keeping our colleges, our students, our faculty and staff, and our communities safe. The science is clear. COVID is a dangerous, infectious disease. But it's just as clear that vaccinations matter, that people who are vaccinated are not the ones who are getting sick now. If we want our colleges to be effective, if we want our communities to be safe, we need our students to get vaccinated. And so we're very excited to be part of a program with Amazon to create more incentives for our students to get a vaccination. Now, in the past, we've provided testing at our campuses. We've provided vaccination clinics on our campuses. We've done other things to strongly encourage our faculty, staff, and students to get vaccinated. With Amazon's help, though, we're now gonna be able to offer 67 scholarships to our students. They're gonna give us $75,000. And with that $75,000, we're gonna be able to offer at each of our 13 colleges, five $1,000 scholarships. And then system-wide, we're gonna pick two students and they will each receive a $5,000 scholarship. That is a full scholarship given our low tuition rates. That is gonna make a difference. That is going to allow our students to be safe. It's going to allow our students to return to the campuses. It's going to allow them to get the education that they so desperately want, and it will allow them to improve their lives. So again, thank you, Governor, for your leadership, 
And I'd like to now introduce Brittany Morris Saunders, who's head of external affairs for Amazon. It is Amazon, again, who has provided this gift to our Community Colleges Foundation. I urge students to go to our website, go to the Foundation website or any of the websites for our colleges, and look for Shot at a Scholarship. That's the name of the program. It'll give you an opportunity to get that vaccine shot and have the opportunity to get the cost of your education covered. Brittany. Thank you, Chancellor Garcia. Hello, everyone. I'm Brittany Morris Saunders, the head of external affairs for Amazon here in Denver. Amazon is proud of our presence across Colorado. Everywhere we operate, we strive not to just be a good employer, but to be a good neighbor. Since the outset of the pandemic, we've been committed to protecting the health and well being of our communities and our employees by ensuring they have access to COVID 19 education, testing, vaccinations through sites across the country, including in our own facilities. Our 16,500 employees live and work here in Denver. My family lives here in Denver and throughout Colorado. So we are deeply invested in ensuring our neighbors stay safe. As colleges and universities reopen nationwide, campuses serve as a natural access point for vaccinations. The Colorado Community College System is an anchor in our higher education network and deeply rooted across the state. With 13 campus locations, coupling with a statewide push for vaccinations with a chance to win a scholarship is a natural fit for Amazon. We are so excited to partner with CCCS for this program. This initiative will offer, as Joe mentioned, 67 students an opportunity to offset the cost of higher education, including two full tuition scholarships. And for others, it will provide additional incentive needed to close our vaccination gap in Colorado and to protect themselves and their families by getting vaccinated. I'd like to thank Governor Polis for the opportunity to announce our program today and to Chancellor Garcia and the entire um, CCC, CCCS team um, for bringing this program to life. Ensuring the health and safety of our customers and our employees remains the top priority for Amazon. We encourage all students to get their shots, protect themselves and their families, and take a shot at a scholarship. Thank you. So, you know, we're making the general public aware of these efforts, but generally these are used in a very targeted way. So community college students will find out about Shot at a Scholarship. People who live near one of the Walmarts or centers with $100 gift certificates are being in and out, will be notified via text and, and, uh, and they have the opportunity to do that. For any Coloradan who uh, wants to know where they can get vaccinated, go to covid19.colorado.gov slash vaccine. That's for more information on where you can get one. It's very convenient. I also want to emphasize it's free. No one checks your ID. Uh, it is confidential and uh, it is very easy to do. And uh, I encourage everybody to uh, help Colorado end this pandemic, most importantly, protect yourself and your loved ones. With that, happy to take some questions. Sure, Governor, uh, I heard from CDPHE today, there are about 350,000 doses of vaccine in the state stockpile um, spread throughout the state that could expire in the next two months. Is there a plan uh, the state has to get those doses to somewhere where they might be used if they aren't used? Uh, and, and have you stopped ordering vaccine at this point? So uh, roughly uh, 200,000 of those doses, and we'll get you the exact number, are uh, second doses for people that receive their first dose. Uh, I expect that they will be used in relatively high numbers in the 90s uh, percentage uh, is. The, uh, the first dose, um, so that's roughly you know, we'll, we'll get you the exact numbers, Steve, but, but the ones that are second doses, we have a very high degree of confidence will be used. We've been seeing between a 95 and a 99% uh, second dose uptake rate. The ones that are not second doses, uh, we wanna get out as first doses. Uh, there's a couple things that could happen with them. Uh, one is uh, we are always hopeful that the FDA will verify that in fact they last longer than originally indicated on the label. They have done that with Johnson & Johnson uh, and, and those that, that, that could happen, in which case, you know, they, they don't know this until they can test whether they're active and then they will say, okay, these are good through October or whatever it is. The other thing we can do is we can give them back to the federal government where they have a program where they donate them overseas. Um, so, and we would, we, would do, we would have to do that a few weeks before they expired. So first and foremost, we'd like to use them that hopefully all this will work and, and they will get into arms. Again, keep in mind that many of them are second doses, but we hope that the first doses are uh, uh, usable. 
there have not been significant orders the last couple of weeks. Um, it's possible there were some of, of one or the other, largely to have the second doses on hand. We have enough confidence in the federal supply that we no longer need to have a stockpile building approach to this. So we're happy to get you those numbers. Um, I believe they are uh, small to, to none orders for the last two weeks. Uh, we have confidence that when we do need it again, and it's likely we will when a couple things happen. One is when it is approved for six to 11 year olds, uh, and that is not imminent uh, is our understanding. It's likely late fall, could be early winter. The other is when uh, the Pfizer vaccine gets the uh, final approval rather than the provisional approval. We expect that there is a jump in that. A number of organizations have tied in requirements to that uh, benchmark. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. Did you have a follow-up? time when you say that the federal supply is there, does that mean yeah. you just pull from the federal supply when you need it? That's correct. We, we can request more uh, Pfizer, Moderna, uh, and to a slightly lesser extent, Johnson & Johnson, the supply strain is not, but, but that's only a small fraction of the number of doses in our state. But yes, the supply chain for Moderna and Pfizer is very strong, and uh, we will, as needed, request new doses. And we will get you the breakdown of that 352,000. Um, I believe it's part of a 19 million number nationally. Uh, and Colorado is roughly, if you do the math, about pro rata and about how many we have relative to other states. Uh, we certainly don't ever want to run out. And so first and foremost, we will not run out. We want to make sure that everybody who wants to get a vaccine can. That being said, of course, we want to do our part. And if there's other areas of the world that our government can contribute them abroad, we as Colorado support that. Kim Posey, Fox 31. Um, what is your assessment of how well the million dollar lottery uh, worked as an incentive? Mm -hmm. And then also, are, is the state tracking what percentage of the new cases are in vaccinated people? Yes, we track uh, whether every case is what we report on. We call them breakthrough cases versus non-breakthrough cases. Uh, I presented the data today, the six month data, 95.7% of hospitalizations January through the end of June were unvaccinated. But what about just yeah, that's reported. Um, it's not as important because we, we care about hospitalizations, but it is reported. Uh, it is a, uh, you know, it's not that extreme difference. I, I don't, we'll, we'll get that to you, but it's not, it's not the 95%. It's a, um, so it's not like 5% of cases are um, vaccinated. It's higher than that. We'll get it to you. I don't remember what it is offhand. It's could be 15 or 20 percent, but we'll, we'll get that to you. Uh, but again, part of what we're, we wanted to emphasize here is that even among those who get breakthrough cases, hospitalization and death are far, far rarer. So we want to report on both of those. Um, when a vaccinated person gets coronavirus and tests positive, it is not a major health concern. It doesn't mean that nobody ever will be hospitalized, but it is more analogous to the types of pathogens and their, their outcome that we've had in our community for many years because the, the person has immunity against that. Uh, we are doing, as you can tell, uh, really all of the above um, to be able to advance the use of the vaccine. Uh, the uh, drawings that we did were a big part of our strategy that helped Colorado achieve 70% by the 4th of July. We're now uh, over 71%. Uh, and we're continuing with these more targeted micro incentive programs. It's, it's part of the overall picture. Um, it's a, the, the bus program, uh, the community outreach and equity program, uh, the, the drawings. Um, nearly, if you took away any of those legs of this massive COVID-19 vaccination campaign, uh, we simply wouldn't be where we are today with regard to our protection levels. So, yeah, I'll do my best. Charles Ashby, freshman. Is, he, is the phone not working? Yes, okay. I'll read them to you, Governor. Can you uh, see? Charles Ashby, Grand Junction Center. Yeah. Small. If the million dollar program didn't boost as many vaccinations as, as we all would have hoped, why, does he, why do you think that a $100 Walmart gift card? Well, I think it did. Uh, first of all, it did meet expectations. Uh, the hundred dollar gift cards. Well, these are these are um, programs that will help continue the interest in the vaccination program. The uh, drawing garnered millions of dollars in earned media. Uh, it also, on the margins, gave people an impetus to get it earlier rather than later. Uh, the $100 gives, again, not, not going to change anybody's mind. There's, I don't think there's too many Coloradans who said, I was not, I I not going to get vaccinated, but to have a chance at winning a million or to get 100 bucks at Walmart, I will. But what you will find is there are 
uh, that 10 to 15 percent, and, and earlier in the contest it was probably more like 20 plus percent, uh, now they've gotten it, some of them, folks who would say, yeah, I'll probably get it someday. Not tomorrow, not next week, I don't want to be sore, I want more people to get it, just whatever excuses people make. That's who this is geared after. Uh, it drives people for immediacy to be part of a contest. Uh, it drives people to pick up 100 bucks if they're at Walmart. They may not even go to Walmart uh, thinking that they're gonna get vaccinated, but then when they see it in the parking lot and they realize they can get 100 bucks, they'll say, well, I was probably gonna do it at some point anyway. Why not do it now and get 100 bucks? So um, yeah, you know, these are all part of Colorado's success and it reaching over 71% of Coloradans with the first vaccine. We know it's lower in Mesa County. Uh, we are targeting one of the buses is exclusively in Mesa County. And uh, we will also be, uh, as we indicated, in Delta at the Walmart Supercenter. And uh, we will be at sites in uh, Mesa County uh, announcing them very soon with $100 giveaways. Governor, uh, you talked about influencers. Are there any influencers in Colorado you'd like to hear from that you think could be influential? And also some of the national figures we heard yeah. just this week, uh, some Fox News figures were talking in a positive way about vaccines in a way we haven't heard before. Could that make a difference? Yeah, I think that's great. Um, I, I've, I've, uh, it's really wonderful to hear uh, uh, Geraldo Rivera speak out, other uh, Fox News hosts. Uh, uh, really folks across all, all respected uh, voices in society, um, especially people who people turn to for news and information, speak out about the importance of, of getting vaccinated. I think that that helps a lot. I certainly encourage those with a uh, public following, with a soapbox uh, to speak out. Um, you know, that's, that's um, generally trusted sources. So uh, that includes doctors reaching out to your patients pediatricians reaching out to your, your patients and telling the importance of this. Um, those who are in media and the news, scientists, uh, I think those are the most trusted authorities and I think that that absolutely helps move, move the ball. Any, are there any new coronavirus restrictions being considered by the state given the staggering vaccination rates and the increase of the Delta variant? So, no. yeah, so, you know, and I, I I think I've made it clear from the start, the state nexus is making sure that our hospital system is not overwhelmed. We have 298 Coloradans that are hospitalized from COVID. Now, to be clear, that's 298 too many. No one wishes more than me that it was zero. Uh, but that is not a threat to our hospital capacity. That is well within our normal operational capacity to serve people. Any Coloradan who gets a heart attack or stroke or appendicitis or COVID will get the top notch quality of care uh, and our hospital system can sustain this level uh, of um, addressing those who suffer from COVID and other conditions. So uh, that, is, that was the crisis. Uh, it was very scary. Uh, last, uh, when, when the virus first reared, there was a huge shortage of gloves, a mass of hospital personnel. Um, our state avoided overwhelming our hospital capacity. Some other states didn't, some other countries didn't, uh, but we came very close. And that's why Coloradans had to step up and really take those extraordinary measures uh, that we did during that time to make sure that every Coloradan who got sick had the very best quality of care. CBS4. Is there any indication, I know it's early, that there, that there would have been a bump in numbers due to the All-Star game and the festivities surrounding it? Uh, there's no evidence of, of that. There has been an increase in COVID-19 across the country and in Colorado, a very modest increase over the last two weeks, especially in areas that are of our state and of our nation, which are under vaccinated. Uh, that has not been as pronounced in the Denver metro area, which is a higher vaccination rate. Uh, it has been uh, larger in percentage increases in Western Colorado, in parts of rural Colorado with lower vaccination rates. So uh, there's no evidence that I've seen about that particular event, uh, but I would say that the country and the state have seen a modest increase uh, in, um, in, in COVID uh, transmission over the last two weeks. State Republicans and businesses across northern Colorado have asked Governor Polis to end the federal unemployment benefits providing unemployed people uh, $300. Will uh, Colorado join the list of states ending the benefits? If not, what are other ways the state can help more people get back to work? Oh, who's the question from, did you say? Gabrielle Franklin with Fox 31. Oh, hey, Gabrielle, how are you? Um, so I wish that we could use the money for something else, but this is six to $800 million 
uh, that the federal government is pumping into Colorado. Uh, we are doing other things. In fact, our uh, Back to Work Jumpstart program helped uh, 18,000 Coloradans return to the workplace. They got $1,600 one-time bonuses, $1,200 one-time bonuses. Um, this current money is only here for another month, but if we cut it off, it would be less money for our retail businesses, for our stores. Uh, there is no other way we're allowed to spend it. It is, if you will, uh, free money from the federal government. I think that uh, writing a check back to them and returning it would be very short-sighted economically for our state. Uh, if I was the federal government, I would, would try to find a better way to invest that money uh, than just a, a UI plus up, but that's what was in the law. And yes, we want that money coming to Colorado because it's important for our small businesses uh, that people have the ability to go out and eat and shop and enjoy everything that Colorado has to offer. Uh, and that will expire in about a month. Governor, uh, the American Academy of Pedi Pediatrics recommends that kids going back to school wear masks. I'm wondering where you fall on that personally, what you think about it, and if that should be a decision left up to the independent school districts or if that should be a state mandate of what to do in that situation. Yeah, so the state uh, yesterday, uh, CDPHE, issued guidance to our school districts and our private schools. Our state guidance largely echoes uh, the CDC guidance nationally. The science is the science. Uh, there's, you know, there had been some minor differences in the past. In Colorado, we had really only recommended for age 11 and up. CDC says two and up age, so we are you know, now recommending two and up. It is, of course, up to individuals and families and schools uh, exactly how they integrate mask wearing, testing, uh, into promoting a safe school environment. And in different areas of the state, uh, there's a different uh, social license and, and a different balance, and, and we really respect that, that local ability to implement the guidance that we've issued at the state level, echoing the, the best science from the national level. We have two questions from Jesus Perez and from Luisian, one for the governor and one for, um, for President Joe Garcia. I'll start with the governor. Um, governor, teniendo en cuenta el aumento de la variante Delta, ¿han pensado ordenar el uso del cubrebocas nuevamente? Uh, los Gobiernos locales y agencias de salud público locales tienen el poder de ordenar el uso de tapabocas si creen que es necesario para su región, para su ciudad. Es importante mencionar que las personas no están vacunadas deberían continuar usando un tapabocas y vacunarse uh, lo pronto si posible. No, the vaccine is not mandatory for our students. We strongly encourage it. We're doing everything we can to make it available to all students. It is mandatory for students who live in residence halls or compete in intercollegiate athletics, but not all students. Perfect. Thank you. We have a question from Etsy Lover from the Denver Business Journal. Have any other businesses outside of the healthcare sector stepped up to offer funding like this that is being put uh, to the vaccination? We'll have to get back, Dad. I don't. I don't have the answer. I, we'll, we'll be happy to prepare that. But we. I. I would say that many businesses have offered in-kind support for the vaccination effort. Meaning, they've opened up their facilities, their parking lots. We. We send the buses in the unit. But they've. They've sort of done. Oh, paid day. Paid days off. Many. Many companies have done paid days off for people getting vaccinated. So, I don't know if we keep an inventory of all of it. But we're happy to share some of those uh, stories of things that companies have done that are willing to have their their names shared. Tara, is it you? Have, yeah. You, want, you, have any, you have some that are willing um, to do it? In specific, um, Grand Junction Chamber of Commerce has been uh, making direct calls to their businesses to try to get them to offer vaccine clinics. Several business owners out there because of the Delta variant um, and because of their low uh, COVID vaccine rate um, are offering 250 to $300 to employees to get vaccinated. Um, pay time off and or $100 bonuses. They're also taking time during the workday to talk to every single employee when they do have a vaccine clinic to let them know that they get an hour off um, and that they'll have a bonus in their paycheck. We can get you more details, so so you can talk to her directly. Yeah, I, I just think before before we know, let you know what companies are doing what, we wanna make sure the companies are okay with their, their, their names being shared, but I'm sure, Ed, there'll be several that are and, and we can connect you to those. Governor, on the unvaccinated uh, deaths and hospitalizations, do you have a sense of what proportion of those are coming from uh, highly unvaccinated parts of the state? Is it driven by those numbers 
uh, uh, mostly driven by those parts of the state that are unvaccinated? Yeah, it's both. I mean, we, we have the breakdown by county uh, just with the sheer numbers that we have. While the rates of vaccination are lower uh, in western Colorado and Mesa County, the sheer number of unvaccinated people is much higher in the Denver, Colorado Springs metro area in the front range just, just because, uh, you know, 25% of, of, of the population of the heavily populated areas is greater than, you know, 50% of the population of the, the, the rest, lower populated areas. So, so I mean, it, follow, it follows where you'd expect it to be. Um, and we're happy to, again, we put up the county map every week, but it's not, no, absolutely, there are unvaccinated people all over our state that are contracting COVID. It is at a higher rate per capita in some areas of our state, but the absolute numbers are highest where the people are. Um, hi, just to clarify, yeah. the students who could be eligible to get these scholarships, uh, will you be looking at all students in your system or just the students who, at this point moving forward, choose to get vaccinated? We'll be looking at all students. So we ask students to apply. They just need to let us know they've been vaccinated and uh, they are, whether they get vaccinated from this point going forward or they're vaccinated in the past, they are eligible. And that's done through targeted outreach to the, uh, to the students. So thank you. Um, again, we encourage all my fellow Coloradans, if you haven't been protected yet, get protected. The rise of the Delta variant, uh, the increased transmission across the entire country, 